Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to talk about good and bad lawn insects. And we'd like to thank Justin May for liking and sharing the podcast. Scientists discovered new ancient beetles in the fossilized feces of an early ancestor of dinosaurs. And they sure do bring up poop a lot. (laughs) Well, in this poop, the beetles they found were about 230 million years old. And they were amazed at how well they were preserved. I saw an old ad that was put out in 1946 for Bugaboo Insect Killer, and they had two types, with or without DDT, and the ad said, Bugaboo kills all nine major pests, flies, ants, moths, roaches, mosquitoes, bedbugs, silverfish, waterbugs, and fleas, and it's harmless to humans if used as directed. In 1972, the U.S. banned the use of DDT because of health and environmental concerns. Uh This week, we're going to talk about five common insects that are bad for your lawn and some beneficial insects and nematodes you can add to your lawn. What are the five bad insects we're going to discuss? White grubs, chinch bugs, sod webworms, army worms, and bill bugs. What kind of grasses do these insects damage? White grubs like warm and cool season grass. Chinch bugs like all types of grass, but they do the most damage to warm season grass like zoysia and St. Augustine. Sod webworms and armyworms like most types of grass. Bill bugs primarily like cool season grass, but they also like Bermuda and zoysia grass. Let's start with white grubs. So white grubs are the larval stage of many types of beetles, like Japanese beetles, June bugs, and bill bugs. And you're going to find them throughout the U.S. and Canada. They live in the soil eating grass roots. And infestation can kill large areas of your lawn. Plus, birds, moles, chipmunks, raccoons, and other animals will dig them up so they can eat them. Mm -hmm. Dogs will also dig in your lawn to find them because they can smell them. And vets say it's okay for dogs to eat a few. One vet compared them to corn chips for humans. They say they're good protein, but if you let them eat too many, it can cause an upset stomach. (laughs) White grubs have a whitish, worm-like body with six legs by their dark-colored head. Their body is curled up to form a C-shape, and they're going to be from an eighth of an inch up to an inch long. It'll vary depending on the type of grub and your location, but beetle eggs hatch in late summer or fall. Then the grubs start feeding on grass roots and organic matter in the soil, which is damaging to your lawn. They're going to burrow deeper into the soil for winter and turn into a beetle the next year. How can you tell if you have grubs? If you have grubs, you're going to start to see yellowing or irregular brown patches in your lawn, and a variety of animals will start digging in your lawn if you have a grub problem. The animals are looking to eat grubs. Raccoons, skunks, opossums, armadillos, birds, and other animals like grubs. Uh-huh. To check to see if you have grubs, Cornell University says use a shovel or bulb planter to remove a section of soil. Dig down four to five inches and check in a few spots. Break apart the soil under the grass roots to check for the grubs. If you have a large infestation, you'll be able to grab a section that's yellowing, pull it back, and the grass will pull away, exposing grubs in the soil. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. We had a problem in my parents' lawn. Okay. By the pool. You could just pull the whole thing up. It was amazing. (laughs) What are chinch bugs? There's different types of chinch bugs. They're about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch long with black bodies and white wings. They look like small beetles. The nymphs are pink or red. Chinch bugs are found in most parts of the country, and they're found in all types of grass. They do the most damage to warm season grass like zoysia and St. Augustine. They usually start attacking your lawn along driveways and sidewalks because they like hot, dry areas. Mm -hmm. 
you'll see yellow areas or brown and dead areas in your lawn. They're using their mouth parts to pierce a blade of grass and suck out the liquids. They release enzymes to help break down the plant tissues, which also damages the grass. Yellow or brown areas in your lawn can be lawn disease. So how can you tell if it's chinch bugs? You'd use a coffee can or soup can, remove the top and the bottom, put it over healthy grass next to a damaged area, and push it down a couple inches into the soil. Fill the can with water. You're going to wait 10 or 15 minutes, and you'd keep adding water to that can as it drains. Chinch bugs will float to the top, if that's your problem. Okay. What are sod webworms? There's over 20 species of sod webworms in the U.S., They're yellowish-brown in color and about three-quarters of an inch long. They're the larvae of moths. So they're caterpillars? Right, exactly. And they're feeding on grass leaves and stems, and they're going to feed on most types of warm and cool-season grass. They create small brown spots of dead grass. They're active in spring through fall. Most of the damage is going to be in late summer. Birds like sod webworms. They're going to be attracted to your lawn. If you have an infestation. How can you tell if you have sod webworms? Michigan State University says look for brown patches where grass is missing. You'll see green fecal pellets on the thatch, which is a sign of sod webworms. And gross. And you can also find sod webworm larvae in silk-lined tubes in the thatch. Lovely. The university recommends marking off a few sections of your lawn in damaged and undamaged areas. Mix one ounce of liquid dish soap to three gallons of water, then pour one gallon over a two-foot by two-foot area. Then you're going to watch for webworms coming to the surface, and it usually takes two to ten minutes for them to come to the surface. Exciting. What are army worms? Army worms are the larva of a moth. They vary in color from greenish brown to black with white, orange, or brown stripes. They're going to grow to about an inch and a half long. They attack most types of warm and cool season grass. How can you tell if you have army worms in your lawn? If you see birds pecking in your lawn and small brown patches, it's a sign you might have a problem. To check, use three tablespoons of liquid soap to one gallon of water. Pour it over a three-foot by three-foot area with damaged grass. If army worms are the problem, you'll see them crawling out of the soil. Gross. What's a bill bug? Bill bugs are a type of weevil. What's a weevil? (laughs) Weevils are pretty cool. It's a beetle with a long snout. You should check it out online. Mm, Don't think so. But bill bugs are about a half inch long. There's different types. They're brown to black in color. And the larva looks similar to white grubs, but without legs. And they're about a half inch long. Bill bugs chew holes in grass where they lay their eggs. The larva hatches and it starts eating the grass. The larva will damage grass from the roots to the leaves. They like grass by sidewalks and driveways. They're primarily found in cool season grass, but also damage Bermuda and zoysia grass. How can you tell if you have bill bugs? If you have brown spots and dead areas in your lawn and you think it might be bill bugs, you're going to grab that grass and hold on to it and pull it up. If it breaks off at the soil and you see a powdery waste that looks like sawdust, you have bill bugs. Great. What are some beneficial insects you can add to your lawn for pest control? Ladybugs and praying mantis. What do ladybugs do? Ladybugs will eat aphids, chinch bugs, armyworm eggs, and armyworms, along with other pests. There's about 4,500 species of ladybugs and around 400 in the U.S. Hmm. If you purchase ladybugs to help with your lawn pest control, have plenty of flowering plants in your landscape areas, And follow the release instructions to keep them around longer and encourage them to lay eggs. Generally, you're going to spray all the plants around your lawn with water and your lawn and release the ladybugs at night. Okay. What about praying mantis? Praying mantis will eat lawn beetles, cockroaches, stink bugs, and chinch bugs. They date back about 150 million years. Their front arms are folded so they look like they're praying. Hmm. They're carnivorous, primarily eating live insects, but they've also been seen eating small lizards, mice, and frogs. Wow. So pretty wild. 
Full grown, they're up to around five inches long. They're the only insect capable of turning their head without moving their body, and they can swivel it about 180 degrees. They have large compound eyes, and they're primarily using sight to hunt their prey. Many species with wings fly at night to avoid getting eaten by birds. Some species have an organ to detect echolocation by bats, and they use the sound waves to avoid the bat. Hmm. Let's explain milky spore. Milky spore is a non-toxic way to control grubs. Well, tell that to the grub. <laughs> so this is a bacteria that's found in soil. The spores are applied to your lawn with a spreader. They infect the grub, killing it after a couple of weeks. See? <laughs> and then it releases more milky spore into the soil. If you apply it for a couple of years, the bacterial spores can live for years, protecting your lawn from grubs. St. Gabriel Organics has powder and granule milky spore. Milky spore is M-I-L-K-Y, capital S-P-O-R-E. St. Gabriel Organics is S-T dot, capital G-A-B-R-I-E-L, capital O-R-G-A-N-I-C-S. What do nematodes do? Nematodes will kill Japanese beetle grubs, army worms, bill bugs, and other pests. Colorado State University says insect parasitic nematodes have been studied for over 50 years, and they don't appear to have any significant harmful effects on beneficial organisms or people. They can't attack or cause disease in birds, mammals, or fish. So they're also called roundworms, and there's a wide range of species. Beneficial nematodes are naturally found in soil, when you apply it to your lawn for insect control, they enter the insects through their mouth, their anus, or breathing tubes, and once inside the insect, they release a bacteria that kills the insect. Then the nematodes develop into adults inside the dead insect, reproducing, releasing thousands of new nematodes. Mm, very exciting. Pretty wild. I spoke to Arbico Organics, and Arbico is A-R-B-I-C-O, they have a product called NEM Attack. That's N E M. And this is great for lawn pest control. This species of nematodes kills army worms, bill bugs, sod webworms, Japanese beetle grubs, and other lawn pests. You mix the nematodes in water and spread it over your lawn. And you can use a hose end sprayer, which makes it easy to apply. Cool. They also sell beneficial insects like ladybugs, green lace wings, and praying mantis. Cool. You can also get ladybugs and praying mantis eggs from Planet Natural, P L A N E T, capital N A T U R A L, and Nature's Good Guys, N A T U R E S, capital G O O D, capital G U Y S. Besides beneficial insects, what are some other ways to control lawn insects? You can use neem oil. The neem tree has seeds that contain a natural pesticide. When oil from the seeds are absorbed or ingested by an insect, it disrupts the hormones in leaf-sucking and chewing insects, causing them not to eat or reproduce. And this controls around 200 insects. Wow. The National Pesticide Information Center says neem oil is practically non-toxic to birds, mammals, bees, earthworms, and plants. The EPA says neem oil has no unreasonable adverse effects. Neem oil controls lawn grubs and Japanese beetles. The company Safer, S-A-F-E-R, says neem oil should be applied at night and then reapply it after a rainfall. Applying it at night reduces harming beneficial insects like bees. Once neem oil is dry on your lawn, it's safe for most beneficial insects. For grubs in your lawn, spray it once a week or every other week until the grub activity stops. Cool. What about insecticides to control these lawn pests? A top-rated insect killer for lawns is Seven, S-E-V-I-N, their granules kill over a hundred insects in your lawn. You would use a spreader when applying it to your lawn and make sure there's no rain in the forecast for 24 hours. After applying it, you would water it in with a hose. You'd start at the farthest part of your lawn and work back so you don't have to walk through wet grass. 
Don't allow people or pets on the lawn until it's completely dry. It's going to kill grubs, fleas, ticks, chinch bugs, army worms, cut worms, bill bugs, earwigs, Japanese beetles, June beetles, scarab beetles, and other insects for about three months. So, lots of insects. Make sure you're following the application instructions. Right. Some other top-rated insect killers for lawns are BioAdvanced Grub Killer Plus. BioAdvanced is B-I-O, capital A-D-V-A-N-C-E-D. This is a granular product that kills grubs, army worms, bill bugs, chinch bugs, sod web worms, and other insects. Ortho Bug Be Gone. Ortho is O-R-T-H-O, capital B-U-G, just the letter B. Dash G-O-N. This is a lawn insect killer that kills 142 insects. And spectricide triazicide insect killer for lawns. This kills over 240 insects and works for three months. Spectricide is S-P-E-C-T-A-C-I-D-E. With the granular products, you want to water them in after you apply it and keep people and pets off your lawn until it's completely dry. You need to be careful when using pesticides, right? Yeah, most pesticides will not only kill the pests, but beneficial insects. And many of these products are toxic to fish and other aquatic invertebrates. The National Capital Poison Center says many spray pesticides can be absorbed by the skin and through breathing. Mm. They recommend wearing disposable gloves and wear a disposable respirator when applying a spray pesticide. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations for the application and use the least amount needed. Read the label for the recommended respirator like R95. R means it's resistant to oil. 95 means it blocks 95% of airborne particles, 0.3 microns or larger. Make sure to read the instructions for the product you're using. For spray and granular products, if you have a partially filled container and you want to throw it out, contact your waste disposal company. Never put these products down drains inside or outside of your home. Right. And only use a lawn spreader for granular products. Don't use a handheld or chest-mounted spreader. And avoid all contact with skin and eyes. You don't want to inhale the dust. Mm -hmm. Some common warnings you'll see on these types of products are avoid contact with eyes, skin, or clothing. Wear protective clothing. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, drinking, chewing gum, using tobacco, or using the toilet. Mm. You always want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the amount you're using for these products and follow the safety guidelines. Right. Having a healthy lawn helps prevent weeds. Right. Does it help with lawn pests too? A healthy, well-maintained lawn is going to tolerate pests better than a neglected lawn, most lawns will do best with about an inch worth of water a week. Check the recommended height for your type of grass. Cool season grass does best around three inches high. Warm season grass around two inches high. Mm -hmm. Spread grass seed in thin areas of your lawn in spring and fall for cool season grass and in spring for warm season grass. Use the right type of grass seed, too, for your area. A local nursery can help you with the correct grass for your location, or you can do your own research online. Drought-tolerant grass is good because it requires less water. Mm -hmm. Don't over-fertilize your lawn. Follow the instructions on the lawn fertilizer you're applying for your type of grass. Keep your lawnmower blade sharp. Sharpen it every season. And never remove more than a third of the height of the grass every time you mow. Right. Do you have anything else to add? We'd like to thank Arbico Organics for providing us with some information for this episode. Make sure to follow the instructions for any pesticide you're using. Wear protective clothing, gloves, and a respirator. Using beneficial insects to control bad insects in your lawn is a great way to go. Let the good bugs eat the bad bugs. Hmm. Easy for you. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks 
Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Books 1 through 16 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fixit Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,